Welcome to our video series on upwind mainsail trim presented by Salesing.com. Today's topic is controlling twist, which is part four of the unit on shaping your sails. In this series, we're presenting a comprehensive review of basic and advanced mainsail trim concepts. We want the series to be useful and understandable for all levels of sailors. Our strategy is to start with small bites and build them into, into a complete picture of sail trim. We'll use a visual approach and give you questions to think about during the presentations. We'll stay practical using theory only as needed. People learn in different ways. If you'd like to learn by reading, you can find an outline version of each video on our website at salesing.com. The series is divided into four units. Our first unit covers mainsail shape. For each topic, we'll discuss the things you should be aware of, why it's important, how to control it, indications and cues to look for. We'll also start building the bigger picture by addressing interactions, how the various aspects of sail shape affect each other and respond to changes in the wind. Today's topic is controlling twist. When we say a sail is twisted, we mean that the angle at the top of the sail is not parallel to the boom, just like a strip of paper might be twisted by holding the ends at different angles. Twist is measured by comparing the cord lines at different heights at the sail to the angle of the boom. In the drawing, the sail, the sail has 5 degrees of twist in the bottom, 10 degrees of twist in the middle, and 20 degrees of twist at the top. Sails have twist because the leech of the sail isn't held in place by a boom or mast. Therefore, the leech will want to fall away when the wind hits it. This is why we often say that twist control is the same as leech control. Let's look at some examples of sails with various amounts of twist. You should learn how to recognize twist when you're looking at the sail from different views. Here we're showing a sail with almost no twist from a bottom view. We added the dotted cord lines to show this. Here's a skipper's view of the same sail. Can you see that the sail has minimal twist from this view? One way is to notice how straight the leech is when viewed from the side. We'll talk about other indications later in this video. Here's an unusual case of twist. You might call it uneven twist. You can tell by the change in the curvur curvature of the leech at the arrow. I have heard this shape called mid-leech dump. There's really no good reason for a sail shape like this. The upper leech of the sail is the loosest part of the sail, and it gets pushed around easily by the wind. So think of twist as determining the performance of the upper one-third of your sail. Twist affects two aspects of the upper sail's performance angle of attack and camber. As you can see in the diagram, if the wind direction is the same at the bottom and top of the mast, the angle of attack will be smaller at the top of the sail. This means there will be less power in the top, assuming the bottom is trimmed correctly. Also, a twisted sail will have less camber at the top since the leech will be flat. This is not surprising since the controls that affect camber primarily the main sheet and the vang, also affect twist. Obviously, managing the performance of the upper third of your sail is crucial. If it's not trimmed correctly, you're losing on a, on a lot of power and pointing ability. This seems simple, but many average sailors don't trim hard enough to power up the upper part of the sail. Also, when it's time to depower, you should start by depowering the upper sail since it contributes most to the healing force. Finally, there are times, especially in very light air, when the wind speed and direction is markedly different at the top of the sail. Twist allows you to trim the sail differently at the top to take advantage of this. In the next two slides, we'll discuss when you want more twist and when you don't. First, as we've already discussed, you want more twist when you're overpowered or footing off to go fast. In both these cases, you may need to twist off the sail to depower it and reduce the healing force. You also want more twist if the wind is stronger above the surface at the top of the mast than it is at the, at the surface. 
This usually only happens in very light air when there is very little turbulence, as evidenced by a lack of ripples on the water. For more on why this occurs, see our post on wind shear and gradient. Let's look more closely at the need for twist in light air. If the wind is stronger at the top, it will be shifted in direction for two reasons. First, the apparent wind will be shifted due to the velocity change, just like it shifts in a puff. Also, the true wind will be shifted to the right because wind veers as it speeds up. This is due to the Earth's rotation and is the same reason that water curves as it accelerates while entering a drain. These direction changes require you to twist the sail to compensate. And the amount of twist will likely be different on each tack. Finally, you need more twist if the boat is pitching fore and aft in waves. If the boat is pitching, the mast is swinging forward and moving faster when the boat is pitching down the wave, and conversely, the mast is swinging back and moving slower when the boat is climbing up a wave. That changes the apparent wind and thus the angle of attack. This effect is largest at the top of the mast and somewhat smaller halfway up the mast and the least near the bottom. So how do you trim the sail in this condition? You want twist so that at least some part of the sail is trimmed properly, no matter which way the boat is pitching. By contrast, you want less twist for the opposite reasons we discussed on the previous slide. First, you don't need twist when the wind is the same direction and strength at the top and bottom of the mast. This is usually the case when you see ripples on the surface of the water. If you're underpowered, you want the whole sail to be powered up. That means minimizing twist so the angle of attack is correct in all parts of the sail. You also need full power for pointing. Finally, in flat water, you don't have to worry about the changes in apparent wind at the top of the mast due to the mast pitching. How do you tell if you have the right amount of twist? Here are three indicators. First, you can compare the angle of the top batten to the boom. In most cases, you'll want the top batten to be roughly parallel to the boom. This keeps the top of the sail powered up while letting air flow smoothly off the leech. If you want to point higher temporarily, the batten can be hooked in slightly, perhaps parallel to the center line of the boat instead of to the boom. And of course, if you are overpowered, you want, a top, you want the top batten to twist off. In light to medium air, if your sail is trimmed right, the leech telltales will all be intermittently streaming and disappearing behind the sail, especially the telltale on the upper leech. It helps to have telltales on the end of all the battens in the sail to see if the leech is properly trimmed at the top, middle, and bottom. Another tip is to try to get all the windward side luff telltales behaving the same way. Sail makers put telltales on jibs at three levels for just this reason. The jib trimmer adjusts the jib leads and sheet tension to get all the windward telltales to start breaking at the same time. You can do the same with your mainsail. If you have too much twist, the telltales near the top will be stalling, while the bottom tails will be streaming. How do you control twist? As we said earlier, you do it by controlling the leech. The main sheet and the vang are the two primary controls, and they both work by pulling the end of the boom down to tension the leech. There are some differences between the vang and the main sheet, so let's look at them more closely. The main sheet pulls the boom down from either the end or the middle of the boom. If you have a rear traveler or a boom bridle, the main is pulling directly down on the end of the boom. If you have a center traveler, it's pulling down on the center of the boom. The vang pulls down from the front of the boom. If the boom can flex, the end will be able to rise even with the vang tight. This leads us to the concept of vang sheeting. In vang sheeting, you tension the vang to flatten the sail and, ease, and then you ease the main sheet in puffs. Easing the main allows the boom to move out 
to reduce the angle of attack down low and also to rise to let the leech twist off to depower the top of the sail. Fang sheeting is very important but it has some limitations which we'll discuss shortly. The Cunningham can also affect twist but less directly than main sheet and vang. The Cunningham pulls the draft of the sail forward. Pulling the draft forward flattens the upper leech of the sail which adds twist. Watch the subtle difference in the upper leech as the Cunningham is pulled on and released. The Cunningham has more effect on twist in sails like the Sea Scow pictured here, where the sail has a lot of area up top due to the large roach. Where you position the traveler can also affect twist. If you drop the traveler to leeward, the main, the main sheet is still pulling directly down on the boom, so the twist does not change much. On the other hand, if you leave the traveler on center, and ease the main to respond to a puff, the boom will move out and rise since the main is no longer pulling directly down. This again relates to vang sheeting and we'll talk about more about it shortly. Now let's explore some of the interactions and challenges involving twist. Heavy air is a challenge especially for lighter crews. The problem in heavy air is drag, especially if you depower de by luffing too much. It's best to keep as much of the main loaded and depower the top of the sail with twist. This reduces healing force. Heavy, heavier crews have an advantage because they can put more load on the sail. When the sail is loaded, the leech will twist off since it's not supported by the master boom. So heavier crews get the benefit of being able to twist off the leech more than lighter crews. Lighter crews must find ways to depower that still minimize luff luffing. One choice is to use a flatter sail, especially one with less depth up top. This sail will have an open leech and will twist off more easily in puffs. Of course, lighter crews also need to use the depowering controls sooner than heavier crews. Another challenge is the sequence of using your controls to depower. The Vang is an important control for depowering, but so is the traveler. What combination should you use? As we've seen, vang sheeting is effective because the vang, vang flattens the sail, but also allows the end of the boom to rise when the main sheet is eased. This sounds ideal, but it has limitations. First, if the vang is too tight, easing the main may not be enough to twist off the top. You may, you may have to ease very far to depower. Which makes, which makes responding to puffs difficult. Also, a too tight vang may distort the sail shape. You may see large overbend wrinkles or even invert the draft of the front of the sail. Finally, the boat will be hard to steer due to weather helm and will be very unforgiving. If you steer down too much, the tight vang will expose a lot of sail to the wind and knock you over. If the boom hits the water, it won't be able to rise and will drag the boat over. Many capsizes are caused by too much vang. Dropping the traveler to depower gives you more forward driving force, reduces healing force, and reduces weather helm. This makes the boat more forgiving. The extra forward force gives you speed that makes up for the lower heading angle. However, if you drop the traveler, you're depowering the whole sail and you need to sheet harder to reduce twist and keep the top of the sail more powered up. You also need to pull the traveler back up as the breeze lightens. The best combination of vang and traveler depends on the conditions. Experiment and learn different combinations based on the feel of the helm, the size of the waves, the sharpness of the gusts, and the ease of adjustment of the vang and traveler. All this will also depend on your boat's rig and sail design. Getting twist in light air can be a challenge, since the wind may not be strong enough to open the leech. Here are things you can do to induce twist in light air. Obviously, you want to minimize the downward tension on the boom. This means light tension on the main sheet, no tension on the vang. 
and the traveler on center or even to windward a bit. Pulling the traveler to windward is a trick that some boats use to further reduce downward tension on the boom. Also, you must heel the boat. This lets gravity help open the leech and reduces the wet and surface of the hull. Many sailors don't heel aggressively enough in light air. However, be careful not to overheel the boat since too much heel reduces sail power and driving force. Let's summarize. Twist is one of the four fundamentals of sail shape. If you've been following our series, I hope you remember the other three. Here are the key points from today's discussion. Twist determines the performance of the upper third of your sail. Twisting a sail changes its angle of attack and therefore the power. You need more twist when you want to depower, reduce healing force, reduce helm, and adjust for wind differences at the top of the sail or pitching. The main controls for twist are leech tension, through the vane sheet and the vang. Vang sheet is a very important technique, but you need to recognize its limitation and find the best combination of vang tension and travel, traveler position to depower. And finally, light air requires active measures to induce twist. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. If you like our content, please subscribe. Also, visit our website at salesing.com for more articles and our unique salesing products.